Each year in the United States, thousands of major crimes go unsolved. When the case has gone cold and police have nowhere to turn, they seek assistance from the public. This is a program dedicated to solving these cases. This is Crime Stoppers Case Files. Welcome to Crime Stoppers Miami. I'm Dick Maston, head of Miami-Dade Crime Stoppers. Today we need your help with a very special case, the July 1st, 2010 shooting of Vidal Perez. Here's the story. I met my husband when I was very young and uh, it was a uh, love at first sight. I saw him and I said, that's going to be my husband. We decided to get married. We came to the United States 30 years ago from the Dominican Republic. Like everybody that comes to the United States, our hands were empty, but we have big hopes, big dreams. When we decided to have a family, we said, well, we want to work hard so we can give our children what we didn't have. I stopped working when I had my first daughter so I can be with her, be a mom, take them to school. I can always remember joy growing up with my father. We'd go to the park. Um, he used to take me to pony rides every Sunday. My dad was the type of person that always helped everybody. He was always willing to sacrifice himself for his family. He always came second. He's the type of guy who just works hard, goes to church, and comes home to his family. My dad read to me every night in grade school. I used to struggle in math, so he used to stay up sometimes with me, like till three, four in the morning, helping me out. He used to say, I have three girls. People would say, oh, you have three girls, you have, no, I have my wife and my two precious daughters. You cannot ask for a better neighbor than Vidal and his wife, Lucy. Very, very humble man. If you were to see Vidal in person, he's about maybe five foot two, very short in stature, but very big in heart. A very faithful person, big believer in God. He was very involved in church. Everybody at church knows him. After church, it takes about an hour to get him out of there because everybody wants to talk to him and gotta like pull him out of there. <laughs> he's the best that you can find. There's nobody out there like he is. He always wanted to be with us, even when he worked, he'll call me and tell me, let's go and eat together, all the time. We used to have a, another small business for 19 years, and uh, we worked together. I was the secretary. <laughs> and uh, every single chance he had to be with me, he'll call. You cannot find that kind of person anymore nowadays. He's a special. We were a very happy family. We had everything that you could ask for. For decades since arriving from his native Dominican Republic, father of two, Vidal Perez and his wife worked tirelessly to achieve the American dream. They worked multiple jobs and opened various businesses, all while raising a young family. He eventually sent his two daughters off to college, but continued the pattern of ambitious entrepreneurism, opening a coin laundry at Northwest 103rd Street and 12th Avenue. But on July 1st, 2010, someone came to that laundromat on a mission a mission to kill Vidal Perez. It was July 1st, uh, 2010, uh, at approximately 7 in the morning. I was informed of, uh, of a shooting incident that occurred at Northwest 103rd Street and 12th Avenue at a coin laundry. I am Detective Asqui, Miami Dade Police Department, General Investigation Unit. I was notified to respond as a backup investigator. As I arrived on the scene, there was chaos going on, a lot of emergency vehicles, a lot of police officers, and a lot of uh, witnesses at the actual scene. The victim in this case was Vidal Perez, approximately 53 years old, an entrepreneur, a dedicated family man. Through our investigation, we, we determined that our victim, Vidal Perez, was shot several times opening up his business. Mr. Vidal had actually started the business previously about five months to the actual day of the shooting, and he actually purchased a very good digital uh, camera throughout the business. He had approximately 11 uh, cameras, different angles, inside, outside, and he prepared his business very well for the type of neighborhood, which is high crime area, and a lot of homicides, robberies, and assaults occur there. And we reviewed that video, and we were able to come up with a description, physical, and determined that the person appeared to be of Haitian descent, small in stature, approximately 5'6", 
me 180, 190 pounds. He was uh, dressed casual. It didn't appear that he was gonna go rob a bank or anything. He just appeared like a regular customer that day. The subject in this case uh, pulled up uh, approximately at the same time Vidal was opening up his business. He was captured on video, walking into the convenience store, pacing up and down the aisle on his cell phone. Shortly thereafter, he walks out of the food store and walks over to the actual coin laundry where he confronts Vidal. Very short conversation. And you see the subject come back to his trunk, unknown what he pulled out of that trunk or if he, what he was doing in that trunk. But he waited till our victim entered his business and entered right behind our victim. As you see our victim entering the interior of the business, you see him putting down his lunch that he brought from his home. While he's opening his office, our subject walks in behind him. When our victim turns and faces him, he appears a little bit surprised that the person he actually spoke a couple of words to a few seconds ago outside his business is standing right behind him with no cause. And our subject pulls out a firearm from his pocket and responds by shooting our victim once in the stomach. As Vidal falls to his knees, Vidal is uh, seen getting back up to his feet, at which point the subject shoots another round into his left arm. Vidal tries to grab the subject, at which time the subject fires his third shot into the back of the head. At that time, our victim laid down on the ground, dying. Our ruthless animal grabs our victim's legs and drags him like if he was a dead dog on the street. Just drags him away from the front of the business so if, in case anybody walking by could see this man laying there dying. He decided to drop him off right there, walk to the front of the business, look around. He was sure to cover his hands while pushing the doors out as to not leave any evidence behind. He exited the business and got back in his vehicle. Uh, champagne in color, newer model, Impala. After this murderer shot Vidal in the abdomen, the arm, and finally in the head, Vidal Perez lay dying on the floor of his laundromat. But there's a lot more to this story, and you're not going to believe how this story ends. We'll be right back with more Crime Stoppers Miami right after this. Crime Stoppers is an international organization dedicated to bringing resolution to unsolved crimes. Members of the public work with police to make the world a safer place. Since 1975, thousands of Crime Stoppers organizations worldwide have helped make over one million arrests. Crime Stoppers acts as your advocate, keeping you anonymous and ensuring that your information gets to the right law enforcement agency. To leave a tip, log on to www.crimestoppers1.com. Vidal Perez came to work at his coin laundry the morning of July 1st, 2010, unaware that someone was out to kill him. The murderer entered the store, shot Vidal in the abdomen, then in the arm, and finally put the gun to Vidal Perez's head to inflict the final deadly shot. The moment the barrel of that gun was pointed at Vidal's head, he prayed for a miracle, and he got one. My name is Vidal Perez, and I'm, I'm alive, I'm here because of the uh, hands of the Lord. It's a miracle that I'm here. Once more, God showed me the power of praying, and uh, I've, I've been always on his hands. My husband has always been a person who is a fighter. This is undoubtedly a, a miracle. I believe that with God, anything is possible. That July 1st was a normal day to me. I got up, I got to the business a little before seven, and this other driver pulled next to my car. I saw him come out of the car and go to the convenience store. So I went ahead and my, my business opening the doors of the laundromat. While walking into the store, we were able to get the subject on the phone speaking to someone. The subject was asking the other person online, where is he? I'm not in the right place. Are you sure this is not the place? I'm here, I can't see him. I don't know where he's at. This was ascertained from actual witnesses that morning. As I opened the door of the laundromat, this guy comes out of the uh, convenience store and uh, came close to me and asked, is the laundromat open? And I said, yes, but what are your clothes? 
As I said that, he walked away to his car, opened the trunk, and I look at him opening his a trunk, and I said, well, he's getting his clothes. And I went inside. A couple of minutes after, when I was opening my office door, the guy came back in the store again with no clothes. At that point, you know, I was suspicious because I was by myself, and the guy comes back with no clothes. And I asked him, can I help you? And he pulled a gun out of his pocket and said, this is an assault. And I said, this is an assault, just take what you want. Don't harm me, I'm not gonna pursue you. It's like I never seen you, just take what you want. He answered me with the first shot. And that was the shot to a lower stomach. We know he was shot three times. Two of those wounds were deadly wounds, mortal wounds, the shot to the stomach. Anyone that is shot by a small caliber, a bullet, all it does is ricochet and tears everything up inside the cavity of the human body. The one to the arm was devastating. It actually shattered completely the bone and his hand was hanging. The shot to the head. How many times have we heard shots to the head, you know, into his brain? When it gets into the cranium area, into the brain, it's just gonna chop it up. I said, this man's not gonna survive this. At that point, I collapsed. I lost conscience. So for a few minutes after that, I, I don't know what happened. When I gained conscious back, I noticed that no one had come to the store, that no one heard what happened. And uh, the Lord gave me the strength to stand up. And I stood up and I walked next door. Vidal is a big believer in God. And I believe that there were angels there at the time that carried him next door. Normally when you're shot in the lower abdomen, it's impossible to sit up, to get up. If Vidal wouldn't have gone up, he would have basically died there at that spot where he was left for dead. He was able to get himself up after being shot and to walk next door to a convenience store where it just so happened that was open and that person was there and this is first thing in the morning. I opened the next door and I said, John, I've been shot. And he said, by who? And I said, by the person that came into your store because he's the guy that shot me. So I collapsed again inside the store. I contacted the Metro Day detective. He told me that Vidal had died there at the scene, that the paramedics had to resuscitate him to take him to the hospital. I got conscious back when the paramedic was putting me inside the ambulance, and they were ripping all my clothes off and just taking care of me and trying to find where the wounds were and all those things. At that point, I felt that I was getting unconscious to get I was going, and I just said, Lord, in your hands I commend my spirit, my wife, my daughters, and everything I am and everything I ever be is in your wonderful hands. And after that, I didn't gain conscience back until about 18 days after. At the hospital, they did emergency surgery. That on the operating table, his heart stopped again and they had to resuscitate him a second time. And they had to actually open my chest from the center all the way to the back to manually massage my heart to bring me back. He had a problem uh, with fluids and he died a third time. They had to revive him a third time. It was a roller coaster. Every single day it was a struggle, but we just kept praying. When the doctor came to speak to my mom, that's when she started mentioning the bullets and I freaked out and she started talking about the bullet in the head and the bullet in the stomach and the whole world came crashing down. And I fell to the ground and it was, it was the worst day of my life. We'll return with more of the miraculous story of the attempted murder of Vidal Perez right after this. As you'll see today, we're inside the incident location where the victim and his crime was shot. Right here where we're walking to is where the subject in this case attempted to kill this man in cold blood for no reason. Today we're pleading for you guys to try to help us and the community to get this person off the street. Mr. Perez was willing to give up his money and what did the robber do? He sticks the gun into his stomach and just shoots him. This was evil, this was done in cold blood and his intent was to kill. This guy did this like you having a cup of coffee. It's something like normal for this person to do. It doesn't matter if he's a little kid, an old lady, he would hurt anyone. It's extremely important for us to find this person that not only did this to my father, but 
did this to my entire family without knowing what a beautiful person my father is. You could be saving somebody else's life in the future because this guy knew what he was doing. He's done it before, you can tell, and he's gonna do it again. We're here for a little while, but you, just like me, gonna have to face the Lord one day, and he's gonna question you about this if you don't turn this guy in. And so it's your mission, your divine mission, if you even have the slightest lead to give Crime Stoppers a call. Crime Stoppers has just advised that they've raised the actual reward to $5,000. We don't need your IDs, we don't need where you live, we don't need anything, but just a tip. The perpetrator had a very unique shirt, the t-shirt that said, kicks his fly. We need to identify and capture this individual. It's up to you to keep your community safe. I ask each and every one of you, even if he's your family member, think about the victim's family. You could give myself or my partner a call at 305-835-4034. That is my direct number. Understand this is an anonymous call and you'll be treated as such. A lot of people love our victim. For the very short time he was open, five months, to love the man the way they love this guy, it's incredible. I've never seen it ever in my 13 year career. If you, the one that did this, is listening or is watching, I want you to know that I have nothing against you. As I am in the hands of the Lord, you also in the hands of the Lord. I just want you to one day find the goodness in the Lord and save your own life. Because if you keep going this route, I could promise you it's not gonna be nice of an end for you. So I really commend you to find the Lord and save yourself. It's completely changed everything. We appreciate the little things now. Every hug, every kiss, I treasure everything, every moment. We have excellent photographs of this would-be killer. He's a black male, approximately five feet, six inches tall, 180 pounds, and he was wearing a Kicks His Fly t-shirt. Police believe he may be hiding in Haiti. Take a good look. Do you know this person? Imagine if it was someone you loved who nearly died at his hands. Would you want justice? If you know anything about this case, please call Miami-Dade Crime Stoppers at 305-471-TIPS. You can remain anonymous and you'll be eligible for a cash reward of up to $5,000. Now when we come back, you'll see fugitives wanted here in South Florida, so stay tuned. We'll be right back with Crime Stoppers Miami. Our next featured homicide occurred at around noon on April 9, 2010, when 49-year-old Jesus Mejias was shot and killed in the driveway of his home at Northwest 171st Terrace in Miami Gardens. Here's the story. Friday, April 9, 2010, at approximately 6.30 p.m., Miami Gardens Police Department officials responded to 3471 Northwest 171st Terrace. It was learned that Jesus Garcia Mejias returned home earlier that day after visiting a, a local convenience store and purchased some items. But we know that Mr. Mejias did return home from the grocery store or convenience store around 11, 11.30. After returning home, Mr. Mejias exited his vehicle and walked through his backyard to his front door of his efficiency. Just prior to entering his residence, with his back turned, Mr. Mejias was shot twice. One to the center of the back and one to his left of his back. The center back was the um, fatal shot, which caused Mr. Mejias to collapse. Mr. Mejias was then robbed. It was learned that jewelry, which is several necklaces, bracelets, and rings, uh, along with money were taken from him. Um, the jewelry contains several rings, religious medallions, and uh, bracelets, matching bracelets. Anyone with this jewelry that attempted to maybe pawn this jewelry, which could lead to a tip, please contact Miami-Dade Crime Stoppers at 305-471-TIPS. No, no es necesario que den su nombre que por favor se conduelan, no por mí ni por la familia, pero esa niña que quedó huérfana, que toda la noche menciona a su papá. Miami Gardens detectives believe Jesus Mejias was killed by a lone gunman. The killer may have been part of the Murder Grove Boys, a gang that operates in this area. His jewelry is missing. Do you recognize any of these items? If you have any information that can help detectives solve this case, call Miami-Dade Crime Stoppers at 305-471-TIPS.
Crime Stoppers has one goal, making the streets safer by solving cases and capturing criminals. Find out more by logging on to CrimestoppersMiami.com or become a fan on Facebook. Now I'm Dick Masta. Be sure and join us next week for another episode of Crime Stoppers Miami.